So let's talk first about what type of shoe is best for you, okay? And I have a few points here, a few questions you should ask about buying the, the, the proper shoe. The first question is, do you have diabetes? Because when you have diabetes, you have to be a little bit more careful when you buy shoes. And when you have diabetes, there's a few things that we, we, we look at that are make it dangerous, okay? If you have diabetes and don't have any problems, you can probably wear any shoe that you want and you're probably gonna be okay. But what happens is when you have diabetes for a long time and your insulin is high and your blood sugars are high, that can affect a few different areas on your body. The first area that it can affect, it can affect your nerves. And some people with diabetes, they start to lose the feeling in their feet. Does anyone know what that's called? Neuropathy. So neuropathy means it's, it's pathog a pathogy of the nerve. So the nerve is injured and you, and you lose the feeling in your feet. So what would be the problem of wearing a bad shoe if you have neuropathy? What do you think could happen to you? You think there would be a problem? What would happen? Support. Support? That would be one, but there's, how about if your shoe is too small? What, what, what's gonna happen if you're wearing a shoe that's too small and you, and you don't know, because you can't feel? Constricted. It would constrict it, what else? How about create a blister? Create a bunion, but that's gonna take some time. The biggest problem with wearing a shoe that's too small is that it, it can rub because there's not enough room. It, it, it's kind of like if you, if you buy a new shoe and you have good feeling and you wear it, it hurts, doesn't it? But what happens if you don't have that, that hurt feeling? It, you're gonna keep wearing it and it's gonna cause pain. It's gonna cause a blister. Now, something else that can happen, I had a patient come in last week. She didn't change her shoes, but she had this problem that we talked about of neuropathy. And what some people do, I don't know if you guys do this, but what she did is after she got done wearing her shoe, she took her sock off and he, she shoved it into the front of the shoe. Do you ever do that? No, but some people do. They take their sock off, they, they put it in their shoe, and she forgot about it. Well, she's gonna maybe wear it later on. And she forgot. She went to wear that shoe a couple of weeks later, she put the shoe on, and she didn't feel the sock in there because she had neuropathy. And then when she put the, 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 the shoe on, her feet, her toes crunched up and she ended up losing a couple of toenails, getting a blister, and she didn't know why. When she came into the office, she said, doctor, I don't know what's going on here. I lost a couple of toenails, I have a blister, and she didn't know why. And I asked her, did you get a new shoe? Did you change your shoes? She said, no, I put my hand in her shoe and I find her sock there. She didn't feel it because of that problem called neuropathy. So that's one of the problems that can happen with diabetics. It's not everyone, but if you have it, you have to be, you have to be checked and you should know about it. The other problem that affects people with diabetes is, is it can affect your circulation or the blood flow. People with diabetes, they tend to have poor blood flow to their feet. When you have poor blood flow, that's a problem. And it's a problem because if you develop a blister, it's gonna take a lot longer to heal. Or if you have another problem, it's gonna take a lot longer to heal. Or if you have an ingrown toenail, or if you have any problem, you could think it's an ingrown toenail, but really it's a problem with circulation. And if you have the wrong shoes that are too tight, that aren't fitting properly, they could cause a blister and cause you a problem. So that's the second problem with diabetes, okay? And the third problem really is if you have a foot problem, let's say you have a bunion or a hammer toe or some, something that makes your foot lock not look normal and you wear a shoe, it could cause a problem, right? But that's not really, anyone can get that, it's not just people with diabetes. But, but people with diabetes, you need a, a, a special shoe if you have neuropathy or poor blood flow. What type of special shoe do you need? There's, there's a couple of types of shoes, they're called diabetic shoes. Most of the time your insurance covers them Okay, there's a couple of uh, stores in town. You need a prescription from either your endocrinologist or your primary care doctor or your podiatrist and they can get you a shoe that's appropriate. Usually that shoe has a little bit more depth than the toe box, meaning it's not gonna squish your foot and it's gonna have a couple of inlays in there that's gonna, that are gonna give more cushion and reduce the callusing and things like that. So that's one thing you have to be aware of if you have diabetes. Also, if you have a flat foot, 
you have to be careful. Because when you have a flat foot, you're going to need a little bit more arch support. And that's going to give you more space in your shoe. Also, you have to be careful that your foot doesn't collapse. There's other problems. Sometimes you need a brace. So you have to be aware if you have a really flat foot, not every shoe is going to work for you. And it may make your, your feet more tired if you have flat feet. Now, and also, do you have a wide foot? How wide is your foot? If it's really wide, a lot of shoes that they say are wide really aren't wide. Even if you buy, you go to the store and you buy a double E, triple E, a lot of times the width isn't appropriate. And I'm going to teach you a little technique to see if the shoe is wide enough for you. Because a lot of the problems come if you wear a shoe that's not wide enough or this is another problem. Right now we're going from summer to fall to winter. So you're going to bring out some new shoes that you haven't worn maybe in a few months. And the problem is, a shoe that you wore last year might not fit you this year. And one of the problems is, is that when you're wearing it throughout the summer, for example, or, or through the fall and winter, that shoe stretches out. The leather stretches out. But then after you don't wear it for six or seven months, what happens? That leather hardens. And then it doesn't stretch as much. So you could have a problem with the shoe. You could, you could have been wearing the shoe for years and years, but you only wear it for a few months. And if it's not stretched out enough, it's going to give you a problem. It might, it might cause a blister, blister, it might cause a problem. So one of the tips that I want to give you for finding the right size shoe is pretty simple. Do you see what they're doing here? This is someone they took off their shoe and they have their sock on. And what they're doing with this pencil or this marker is they're tracing their foot. This is really important if you have a wide foot. So you step on a piece of paper and you have someone else trace it for you. Then when you go to the store, you, you take that and you see if it fits in the shoe or even better yet, you take the shoe, the shoes have a sock liner. Do you know what a sock liner is? Basically, it's that, that thing inside the shoe that says Nike, New Balance, Asics. It's that thing that you pull out. And a lot of better quality shoes, they have a sock liner that comes out. So what you do is you take this tracing, and, and when you do this tracing, you actually cut it out with the scissors, kind of like arts and crafts. And you trace it, you cut it out, and you bring that tracing, and you take the shoe and you pull the sock liner out, and you see if it fits. And if you find that the tracing on your foot is a lot wider, it's not gonna be the right size for you. And you know what you're probably gonna find out? Most shoes are too narrow for your foot. And that's just the truth because the people that make shoes, they're making them for these mannequins that don't really exist. And especially for females, what happens with a female? Every time you have a child, and if you've had two or three children, your foot size goes up. Your foot size goes up a half size or a full size. And sometimes it might get wider, sometimes it might get longer. And another thing you have to be aware of, just because you've always been a size six or a size seven, you should go and have them measure your foot. Don't just assume, I've always been a size six and buy a size six. You have to try it on, you have to have someone professionally measure it because the, the brands change. Just because you're a size six and a Clark doesn't mean you're gonna be a size six, six and an A6 or a size six, because there's hundreds of shoes and they all make them on a different format that's called a last. And so it, it differs. So you should really be fit and sized every time. But this is a good tip. Take a tracing of the shoe with you. Good tip for you. Another tip to find it. When's the best time to shoe shop? I just gave you the answer if you read it. When's the best time? Is, it, is the best time in the morning? No, when? When's the best time? In the afternoon. Why? Your feet expand. At the end of the day, your feet are a little bit bigger. Your feet are a little bit more swollen. So what happens if you go in and you buy shoes in the morning when your feet are not swollen and there's no problem, you're gonna buy it, but by the afternoon, your foot's gonna be bigger and that shoe isn't gonna fit you. So it's better to buy the shoes in the afternoon and also it's better to buy a shoe at a place where you can return it. I have, I have so many patients, they come in and they say, doctor, I bought 10 or 20 pairs of shoes 
and none of them fit or none of them feel good. So you have to find a store. In most stores, if you, if you get a shoe and then you go home and practice wearing it in the house and you don't get it dirty, normally they'll take it back if it's not comfortable. That's what you need to find because if you don't like your shoe, you shouldn't keep it. You should give it away or return it or donate it. And talking about donations, at our, at our office in Worcester, we actually take donations for shoes that people don't, don't need or don't want, and they give them their, I think they're athletic shoes. It's for a group called Girls on the Run. We, we take shoe donations. Because a lot of people have shoes sitting around. So you want to shop for a shoe in the afternoon. The second tip is about socks. Make sure that whatever sock you're going to wear, you should wear it that day. What I mean by that is if you're going to go buy a, a boot for the wintertime and you're in the summertime buying it, and in the wintertime you wear thicker socks, you should wear thicker socks when you go buy the shoe because a sock matters. Because it's thicker, it's going to take up more space and things like that. So make sure you're wearing the same type of socks that you wear for that type of shoe. Okay? That's a simple tip. Another tip that's a lot of times it's, it's missed Measure both feet before you buy a shoe. So any, any shoe store that's, that's reputable is going to be able to have one of these devices to measure your feet. You should probably measure your feet. Measure both of them. Why? Why do you think that's important? Most people have one foot that's maybe a half size bigger than the other one. And then when you buy the shoe, you don't want to buy it for the small foot. You want to buy it for the big foot. That, that's common sense. But if you, let's say you always measure the right foot and the left foot's bigger, your shoe's going to always be smaller on one side. Now, a lot, there's some people, I have a few patients, they actually have one foot that's a size or two different. Because they have a bunion or because they have other problems, one side, one shoe is a lot, a lot bigger than the other. What do you do then? Unfortunately, a lot of people have to buy two pairs of shoes. That gets a little expensive though. So there are a couple of websites. If you buy mismatched shoes, you can, you can buy one size in one and one size in the other. You pay a little bit more, but you don't have to buy two pairs of shoes. So if you have that situation, there are some resources online that you can buy two different size shoes. I know it sounds funny, but there are some people like that, and it's a real pain. Because usually what they do is they buy the bigger one, and so for the other one, they're just kind of floating, flopping around, flopping around. Now another thing you should do is you should walk around with the shoes. Meaning in the store, at home, because just because you put it on and it feels good, you don't know how it's going to feel when you walk on it. So I recommend when you go buy a shoe, give yourself a little bit of time. Don't do it right before lunch. Right? Don't do it towards at the end of the day after you've eaten something so you have a little bit of time. Walk around, see if it's comfortable. If you're unsure about two different shoes, put one shoe on one foot, one shoe on the other foot if you want to try a couple of styles to see which one feels more comfortable. Okay? And then walk around in the shoes. That's important. This is something especially for females. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on the females right now. The, what, what the females say, I've been a size 6 since I was 16, <laughs> and now you're 65. Do you think you're going to be the same shoe size at 16 as 65? No. Most people aren't. And so don't buy shoes based on shoe size. Based on how, but do it based on what you measure, and how it feels, okay? And you always want to have a, about, a, about a, a finger width in the front of the shoe. That's a good way to measure it as a finger width. But the only thing I would say is that you have to be careful about comfort. Okay? You, want to, you want to buy a shoe according to your comfort, but there's one reason you shouldn't do it based on comfort. There's one diagnosis that we just talked about. Yeah. If you have neuropathy and you're diabetic, your feeling isn't very good. So you can't base it on what you feel. You have to base it on what your measurements are. So you have to be really careful if you have that neuropathy. Don't trust the feeling if you have neuropathy, like I just said. 
And also you have to pay attention the width. And what I mean about the width is a lot of times we buy a, we buy a shoe and we do it based on the length of the shoe, okay? But your length may be fine, but there's a lot of things that can make your foot wider. And you have to be careful about that. I gave you one of the answers. Who knows what a bunion is? Do you guys know what a bunion is? A bunion is that big protrusion on the side of the big toe that stretches out your shoe. So your shoe may be wider because of that. Okay, that's a bunion. Also, you have to be careful if you have a hammer toe. Do you guys know what a hammer toe is? So a hammer toe, if you look at your toes, they're normally straight. What happens with a hammer toe is it curves up like this. And so you need to get a deeper shoe to allow for the hammer toe. If not, it's going to rub on the top of the shoe and it could create a sore or it could create a callus on the tip. So for these things, you might need treatment or you just may need a bigger shoe. Now, one thing about these two things, I'm going to show you one of my favorite shoes for people that have a bunion and a hammer toe is something called a, a stretch shoe. Have you heard of a stretch shoe? Well, for the females, have you heard of spandex? It stretches, right? So what you do is there are certain shoes that have a stretch material on it. So you put it on and it stretches for the hammer toes versus having to fight against the leather or the fabric. It's much more comfortable and I'll show you an example. Uh, the, other, the other thing I want to talk to you about is it's not just how it feels. You want to feel the inside of the shoes. I bet you no one's ever felt the inside of the shoe before. You take off the shoe, you feel on the inside. Why? Because sometimes there are certain seams that can irritate you. Where specifically? The, the main area that's going to irritate you is where the two pieces of the leather or fabric come together. Because when you have two pieces of leather or fabric, there's a seam. Now I ask you, does a seam, does it stretch more or less when you have a seam? No, a seam stretches less because you have the two pieces of fabric, you have the sewing, you have the thread, and it doesn't stretch as much. Now, if that seam is over where your bunion is, or if it's over where another part of the problem is, it's not going to stretch enough for the bunion, so it's going to hurt. So you have to be careful of any seams inside of your shoes. You also want to examine the sole of the shoe. Why do you think it's important to examine the sole of the shoe? What would be a problem? What's that? Too slippery. We're living in New England. In the wintertime in New England, have you ever seen dress shoes? Like, let me show you an example of a dress shoe. How about if you have a, a shoe, you buy a shoe that has no traction like this dress shoe? Yeah, is that going to be good for you? No. You're going to fall. A lot of shoes, even a lot of diabetic shoes, they don't have any traction because they're made for people that live in Arizona, for example. Or you have to be careful because you may have a shoe that has traction, but you've been wearing it for a year or two and there's no more traction. And that's going to make it slippery. So that makes you at greater risk of falling. Okay, whether it be in your house or outside, things like that. So you have to be careful of the traction on the shoe. You also want to look at if there's cushion. A lot of dress shoes, all they have is like a, 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 dress, a dress bottom, which is a leather bottom, has no cushion. Okay? What would be a problem if you have no cushion? Let's say you have a bunion or a hammer toe. That's going to give you probably painful calluses. Now, a callus, you don't have to have treatment for it. But it makes it feel better if you have a shoe with more cushion in it. So if you're wearing a dress shoe all the time, I have a lot of older patients, they like to wear dress shoes because they've been used to wearing dress shoes their whole life. They come in with a dress shoe and they say, you know, doc, my calluses really hurt me. Well, if I get them in a shoe with more cushion, it's going to feel more comfortable for them because of that cushion. Okay? Most people feel better with a shoe with a little bit more cushion. We talked about traction. And I want to show you a little bit, for those, because a lot of people probably here are diabetic, what the main difference is between a normal, just a normal shoe, and why a diabetic shoe is different. First, I want to show you some of these shoes here. 
And what I mean to show you by these shoes is everyone that I recommend diabetic shoes for, especially the women, because the guys really don't care. Guys, just, we, we have two shoes, black and a brown, and that's it. But for the females, all the females, they tell me, you know, doctor, I don't want a diabetic shoe because they're ugly. ugly. That's what everyone says. But I'll ask you, do these look ugly? Yeah. Oh, come on. They're not that ugly. Look, at, this is a pretty, this is a pretty one. This is a pretty one. There's a nice Mary Jane here. So what they've made is they made these diabetic shoes a little bit more fashionable for you. Okay, so first thing I want to I want to kind of throw out there is that if you have to wear a diabetic shoe, they're not all ugly anymore. They're more fashionable. But let's talk about the anatomy of the shoe. Okay? So, on the bottom, you're going to have a nice cushioning on the bottom. Now, what it says here, it says hidden depth design. What that hidden depth design is that all these diabetic shoes are deeper. So you're not going to rub your toes, they're going to be easier to fit on because your foot tends to get thicker and wider as you get older, as you have diabetes and things like, things like that. So what it means is that this is deep down here in the toe box and so this, this sole is actually part sole but it's part deep, it's kind of indented, it's kind of concave to allow for more space for your toes. So that's something that's really important. What you have next is a nice firm back of the shoe. When you, when you examine a shoe, you don't want a shoe that bends exactly in half. A lot of these young kids today, they're wearing these shoes that if you bend them or twist them, they can twist totally like your, you can twist your tongue or they can bend in half. That's not very supportive for you. They can, that's a greater problem with, with fall risk and things like that. So you want a shoe that's more firm. What this is, it's called a spacer. So a spacer is allowed, if you take out the spacer, because it's there if you need it or not, if you take out the spacer, then your shoe has more space in it. If you have a toe that toes that camera up or a wide toe or something like that. So these spacers can be taken out. Next, what you have is a, is a custom orthotic. Now, do you see how this orthotic has a little part of blue here and a little part of like a skin tone right here? It's really important that they have both of those colors because this blue portion on the bottom is greater density. It gives more support. But the area that looks like the skin color has the same density as your skin. Why is that important? The reason it's important, if you wear a shoe with that and you, and you have and your foot's moving around, it's going to protect you from getting calluses. It's going to protect you from hopefully getting a wound or an ulcer, we call it. Okay? And it's, but it's only for the bottom, right? Because this is just an insole. I've had some patients that have diabetes and they have wounds on their feet. And I put them into a shoe like this and I can heal the wound just from that. Now, the, the one caveat I want to tell you is if, you, if you're one that really needs these, these shoes, they only work when you wear them. I know that sounds funny, but I have a lot of patients. I give them the diabetic shoes, and they say, you know, doctor, my, my wound's not healing, and my calluses are still painful. And I ask them, well, when are you wearing them? And they say, well, I, I only wear them when I go out of the house. And I ask, how often do you go out of the house? Well, I go out of the house once a week. So they're not going to work. So these shoes are, are made to wear all the time. You wear them in the house, you wear them out of the house. And when you get these shoes, you're going to get three pairs of those orthotics, or three sets, so you're going to get six of them. And the reason is they're made to switch every four months because the cushion wears out. So in the diabetic shoes, your cushion wears out, but also in the shoes that you're wearing, even if you don't wear the shoe, the cushion's going to wear out about after about a year. And, and that's another problem we have to talk about because a lot of people that... You know, I'm not just going to talk about older people, but younger people, they never throw their shoes away. So they have shoes that are 10 years old and they, and they wonder why they hurt their feet. Well, you don't have any cushion in them after 10 years. You probably don't have any cushion after two years. One is, is how much time you wear them, but another thing is how old they are because a lot of the, the running shoes especially, they're made, to, they're made to break down and they lose the cushion in them. So you have to be careful about swapping out your shoes. And then the last aspect 
is the top of the shoe. They have a seamless liner. Remember I told you you have to check the inside for any seams. And they have a, a padded top of the shoe with foam. That's gonna protect the shoes from hitting, the, I'm sorry, the toes from hitting the top. So you can see, these are the pretty neat shoes. A couple of other benefits is that normally insurance covers them for most patients. So you usually don't have to pay anything. I can't guarantee because there's so many different plans these days, but for a lot of people, they're covered. Have a diagnosis of diabetes. Exactly, so to get a diabetic shoes, the name, the name says you have to have diabetes. Now, just, just be aware though, let's say you have a, a really big bunion or a, a toe that's curved up and you can't find a shoe that's comfortable. I, a lot of times, recommend people to go to a medical supply store and buy one of these shoes for your own shoe. You can buy them. They're about the same price as another shoe, and, and they're, they're gonna fit better. So for a lot of people, I recommend go get a diabetic shoe, but they say, oh, I'm not a diabetic. Well, it's not really for the diabetes. It's because it has all these other added benefits to this shoe. Another thing I wanna talk to you a little bit about, which we, we addressed, was the width of the shoe. And what I have here is an x-ray. You see here a traditional shoe. And you see here, this is a brand name, but it could be any, any brand that's wider. Do you see what happens? This is the same foot. Do you see the difference of what's happening to that foot? It's No, it's normal. <laughs> here it's normal. You could say this is spread, but you, what you could also say is what's happening to this traditional shoe? It's confined or it's squished. This, this looks like a pretty normal foot, doesn't it? And most shoes, this is what I'm getting at, are too narrow, even if you have a normal foot. So if you have a normal foot, your foot is squished all day long. Do you think that's gonna cause some problems over time? Yeah. yeah. The biggest culprit to hammer toes and bunions and the best thing to keep me in business is wearing shoes that are too small. So I'm telling you guys a secret, but I'm not gonna tell anyone else, okay? You should probably wear a shoe that's wider. Do you see how, how this width? Look at even between the bones. See how it's wider? See the toe? It's nice and straight. You see how the toe is curved in? Because now this is the one thing I want to point out. At the shoe, a lot of times when we buy a wider shoe, what, what's, what's considered wide is in the middle of the shoe. That's what's considered wide. When you buy a wide shoe, do you see how these toes, they taper? You see how it's tapered, it's kind of going into a point? Our feet don't go to a point, our feet stay wide. Why in the world are all the shoes tapered? It's because of fashion, it's because of someone invented it hundreds of years ago for females to wear to make them suffer. <laughs> and, and women, they don't care, they want to be pretty, so they wear the shoes. But what's happening now is there are other brands that I'll, I'll email when I send you the email, it's, they're gonna be wider. A wider shoe, it's gonna look a little different, but it's gonna be more comfortable, and it's gonna cause less problems. Okay, this is, this is one brand, it's called an Ultra Shoe. There's a lot of other name brands, but do you see the difference? See how wide this red shoe is in the front? And you, this is a traditional shoe, that's what most shoes look like. You see how narrow it is? And this is an example. So these two shoes were worn by the same person, and this is what it does to their feet. Pretty interesting, huh? About the width of the shoe. Another type of shoe I wanna share, it's a shoe that's come out a couple of years ago, and all the people that, if you watch all the marathoners when they're doing the Boston Marathon, they're all wearing this shoe. It's, it's got a funny name to it, it's called Hoka, okay? But what I kind of equate it to, it kind of looks like a double stuffed Oreo cookie. Do you see this? Look at how thick that cushion is. It's about two or three times thick as a normal shoe. The person that invented this shoe was actually an older gentleman that had knee arthritis. And he didn't, and, and the doctor told him, he said, well, you got knee arthritis, you should stop running. And he didn't want to stop running, so he invented a shoe with a lot more cushion. When you have a lot more cushion like that, it's gonna, it's gonna put less impact on your joints. It, it's gonna provide less um, support and, and things like that. The only thing you have to be careful of is, do you see how high that is? That's, it's very high. So if you're not used to wearing it, you have to be careful you don't trip with it because it's, it has a different feel. It's, it, for females, it's kinda like you're wearing a, a platform. 
a little, it's a little bit higher. So you have to be careful if you have balance problems with a shoe like this. But for a lot of people with foot problems, this is a very, a very beneficial and helpful shoe. This is kind of my mainstay for my patients with, with diabetes and even those that don't have diabetes. This is called a New Balance. It's got a number, it's about a New Balance 928. It comes in black, brown, and white. There's a couple of benefits to this shoe. First of all, this shoe actually is extra depth, like we just talked about. It's very, very deep. So it's not gonna allow you to rub your, your, your toes in the top. Another thing about this shoe is that it's very stable. Do you see that? It's very stable in the sole. And, it's, and it has a little bar in here called a roller bar, so it makes it easier when you're walking. A lot of my patients that are a little bit older, I recommend this shoe. The only drawback for some of the women is they say the thing looks like, a, like gunboats. You know, it's really huge. And they say it's a little bit big because they like to wear the cute little princess slippers and things like that that don't offer any support. So it's going to be a little bit bigger, but it's a very good shoe for you. Now this is the type of shoe that I was talking about before if you have bunions or if you have hammer toes and you want to wear kind of a, a still a sensible kind of a normal shoe. This is called a stretch shoe. This black material here, it's actually a type of a spandex material. So it, it, it's able to protect it, but it also stretches. So if you have a, for example, if you have a big bunion, it's gonna stretch the shoe out when you put it on. And then when you take it off, this, it's gonna go back into normal. So they have a, different types of shoes. They have more of a traditional shoe. They have a, a little bit of a dress shoe. And they have different types of shoes that are a little bit trendy that you can wear with the stretch material. This is my favorite type of a shoe to recommend if someone has a really kind of a, a big hammer toe that goes up because it'll stretch on the top or if they have a big bunion or another type of a problem. It's called a, a stretch shoe. And most of these are, are diabetic shoes. Like I think this one here, this black one with the Velcro is a diabetic shoe, but this one is just a normal shoe that you can buy. They have to make shoes like this because people, people's feet are changing. I'm gonna give you some shoe recommendations because it's always hard to find shoes, if I may. Now I don't advertise for any of these, but these are where I send my patients. Because people, you get frustrated about where you can find a good shoe. The first one, for my older patients that want more of a dress shoe, it's Panza shoes. They're in Framingham, downtown Framingham. They have a good selection of shoes. They've been around for many, many years. They have the stretch shoes there. They have a lot of different shoes that are gonna be helpful for you. Now, if you want one of those wider shoes or the shoes with more cushion, you can either go to Miles to Go or you can go to Sneakerama. Miles to Go is in Sutton and Sneakerama is here in Worcester, right over Lake Ave, right, right between the Worcester Shoesbury line. Evans and the Common, that's another one. And then Dow Shoes. Uh, Dow shoes is a, a common, they have some deeper shoes, diabetic shoes, so they're very helpful. It, it's something that's hard to find. You're, you're going to have a hard time if you have a really wide foot. You're going to have a hard time finding a shoe at, at DSW, for example. Or you're going to have a hard time finding at one of these traditional shoe stores. Another thing that's really important is having a good cobbler. Okay, there's not that many cobblers around anymore. Okay, there's one. That, that's on Grafton Street. It's, it's called Carbonaz. They, they do shoe repairs. Why do you need shoe repair? Well, for example, if your sole wears out, you can bring it there, they can add a new sole to it. That's what most people think of. But the main reason I use it is let's say you buy a shoe and you have a big bunion, and that bunion is hurt by the shoe and you don't want to throw the shoe out, you can go to Carbonos, they can either put like a, it's called a, a, almost like a ball in a socket, and they put it in there with them, some shoe stretching liquid, and it stretches it to allow you to wear that shoe. They, they stretch the shoe. And if they can't stretch the shoe, there's something else that they can do. They can also take the shoe and they can cut out that piece of material, and they can add that stretch spandex material. And they do it a similar color so no one can tell. So that's another thing they can do. And then the third thing that I, I send over to Carbonaz is a lot of people, let's say after you have a knee surgery or if you have a hip surgery, what happens to your, the length of your limbs? 
Does it sometimes shorten a little bit or get longer? Very, very common. So if you can't find a little insert to go in your shoe to, to, to even it out, you can go to Carbonaz and they can add on something on the bottom of the shoe that looks normal and it'll, it'll, it'll make it the same height for you. So if you have a, a limb length problem, they're very good at doing that. So that was kind of the shoe tips that I had. I'd like to open it up if anyone has any questions, if you want me to look at your shoes, if you want me to go around and, yeah. So the question was, how come I didn't put any open back shoes? I think open back shoes are fine for certain conditions. If you have a big bump on the back of your heel, that's called a Haglund's bump, an open back shoe is more comfortable. If you have a tendon problem called Achilles tendonitis, I think it's helpful. The problem with wearing open back shoes all the time is that you're, to keep the shoe on, what do you think your foot has to do? It has to work. Otherwise, it's going to come off. So to work, it tends to scrunch down the toes, and that's going to cause hammer toes. If you wear them for years and years, if you wear an open back shoe, it's going to cause your toes to scrunch, and it's going to cause hammer toes. Another thing is if you have a, a slip-on shoe or a clog, to make it fit, it normally has to be too small. It has to be pretty small. There's not going to be any space at the tips of the toes. So for some people, I think clogs are fine. They're really easy to get on if you're not doing a lot of walking. But if you're doing a lot of working, a lot of walking, they can slip off, you can trip, and things like that. So I showed you the more stable shoes. But I think for day-to-day, -day, just kind of getting around, doing a little walking, I think a clog is a fine shoe to wear. Yeah, and they're always changing the numbers. But the one I showed was a New Balance 928. Just so you know, in terms of New Balance shoes, the higher the number, the more supportive the shoe is. So when you go, you're gonna ask, you're gonna to wanna to look for a 900 or 800 type of series shoe and, and ask them, and you can see, I think they may have changed it to 930 or something else, but it's a 900 level shoe. And just because you buy a New Balance, not all New Balance or Asics are, are all created equal. You probably didn't know that. A New Balance you buy from Sneakerama is usually the top level shoe and you're gonna pay top level for it. If you're gonna to go to a discount place to buy shoes like DSW, something else, you're gonna see the name New Balance. But if you look at the number, it's gonna be a 300 or 200 or 400. So it's, you're, you're, getting, you're paying less, but you're also getting less. So my recommendations is you should be paying about 90 to 100 dollars. I know that seems a lot, but if you get one shoe that really fits, it's gonna last you a year or two. Okay, whereas a lot of people, they go to a discount place, they get two or three pairs, but they don't fit, they hurt their shoes, they hurt their feet, they don't really, they don't do much. So yeah, 928, I think that was the picture I, I looked for. The, the comment was is, is that the shoe is very hard on the bottom and it felt like rocks, uh, very rigid. A rigid shoe is normally good, but you have to be careful. If, if you get a new shoe and your foot starts to hurt, the problem is probably the shoe. Okay, that's, I know that's common sense. Or if you've been wearing a shoe and it gets really old and your foot starts to hurt, it's probably because the shoe is getting too old and you should get a new shoe. I always recommend trying to change your shoes first before you come and see the doctor. So those are called the clog that all the nurses are wearing. It's, it's, a, it's a, called a Dansko. That's the name brand. Now there's a lot of other brands. So what a Dansko is, it, it, it's not an open back shoe. It actually has a very rigid back to it. Uh, it has kind of a back. What it has, it has a nice heel to it, and it's lifted up, and it's very solid. It's, it's made out of wood or hard plastic. Dance goes, or these shoes that the nurses wear, are a very good shoe if you're standing in one place for a long time because they help with the support and with the heel lift. If you wear a shoe that has a little bit of a heel lift, it's gonna take some of the pull and tension off of the muscles in the back of the leg, so it's gonna not get you as tired. The nice hard plastic or wood is gonna make, it's very stable, so it's gonna feel good. A lot of doctors that are surgeons, they use it because they're standing in one place all the time. So when I do surgery, I stand in one place and I wear my dance coats. So a lot of us as surgeons, a lot of nurses using it. The only problem with that shoe is it's very good if you're standing in one spot. It's not a good shoe if, you, if you're going side to side. 
because a lot of it's like wearing a high heel shoe for the females you know that you typically can sprain your ankle with a high heel shoe very easily so it's good if you're standing in one spot but if you're going back and forth a lot or walking around a lot i have a lot of people they they sprain it because it's so high and it's not stable side to side it's very stable if you're just, if your foot sitting in there another problem with it is if you have a big bump some some females they have a big bump on their heel and these dance moves are very hard in the back. And so if you have a big bump, it's gonna hurt it. It's gonna constantly rub, okay? And also you have to be professionally fit for these dance moves because normally you buy them a little bit small and you, and you break them in. So don't just buy them anywhere because you're, you're not gonna like them. You wanna go to a place that j just sells those or specifically sells those because they can get you the proper pair. So they're either a little bit small and you stretch them or they're a little bit big. Uh, to make them fit, but they're they're a good shoe. They're a good shoe that a lot of people are wearing. But do they cure all the foot problems? No. So for people that have plantar fasciitis or other problems, I don't recommend a shoe like that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. For for high arched foot, I would say eighty to ninety percent of people have low arches or have uh, normal arches. Very, very few people have a high arched foot. We call it a cavus foot. The problem or the challenge with a high arched foot, when you have a high arched foot, you sometimes get ankle sprains a lot easier and your toes go up. You get hammer toes. So there are, there are really no shoes made for a high arched foot. You can try to get a shoe with a better arch in it, but normally my patients with a, with a high arched foot, I recommend a shoe with greater cushion because when you think about a high arched foot, I kind of call it a, tri a, tri a tripod foot because they tend to have pressure to the heel and pressure to the underneath the big, big toe joint and the little toe joint and they have calluses there. So it's kind of like a tripod. And, and to support that, you need a, a nice orthotic that really contours their arch. And the only way to do that is making a custom orthotic. You can't just buy an over-the-counter orthotic because it's not gonna be supported uh, enough for you. So if you have a high arch foot, you, should, you really need a custom insert that goes in the shoe. You have to go to a podiatrist and have it made. There's no real great shoe, just a shoe with cushion is the best one. So other than New Balance, what other sneaker? There, it depends on what foot type. If you have a really, if you have a normal foot, Okay, if you have a normal foot with no problems, I like, I like New Balance, I like Asics, I like Saucony. So, and, and that's a good point. I, I usually simplify it. I want you to buy a running sneaker. You may say, but doctor, I never run. The reason I recommend a running sneaker is because it has more support and it has all the newest technology. So I recommend if you're gonna looking for a shoe, buy a running sneaker. If you want that New Balance 928 that I showed you before, that's considered a walking sneaker. A walking sneaker is fine, but it's not as it's not as high tech as a running sneaker. But a walking sneaker tends to be wider, tends to be more stable. But if you're stable enough and you just need a good shoe, I recommend a running sneaker. The problem for the for some of my patients is the running sneakers, they tend to be like bright green and bright red and bright yellow, and so people don't like the colors. So that's the only problem with the running sneakers. But Asics, New Balance, Saucony. And I actually don't recommend shoes a lot of times. I just, I think it's easier to develop a relationship with a shoe store. Because then they get you what you need. And so I usually recommend to go to Sneakerama. They do a really good job. I don't recommend people buying their own because what happens is you're going to go buy a shoe and you're not going to like it and you're going to keep it. So you end up spending more money because you're buying a lot of shoes because they're cheap instead of buying one pair that's good. With hammer toes, a hammer toe, once again, is a, a toe that curves up like this. There are a couple of things that you can do. You can do a wider shoe or a deeper shoe that can help it not to hit. But when you look at a hammer toe, there's two types of hammer toes. There's one that's called flexible. So basically what flexible means, if you take it at the tip, it'll straighten out. If it's a flexible toe, there are some pads you can put underneath it that can help that. You can tape it, you can do different things. If it's already developed arthritis, and it can't be curved down, most people tend to get rubbing on the top of the shoe or rubbing on the tip with calluses. If it's rigid, all you can do is change your shoe or buy like a protective toe cap. It's a plastic cap, a fabric cap to cover it because it's rigid. So with rigid ones, the only thing you can do is take out the joint and straighten it with a surgery. That's all you can do. And buy shoes that are deeper so they're not gonna squish that hammer toe. 
good. So if you have weak ankles, and that tends to cause ankle sprains, okay, um, I, I recommend a shoe that's higher up to give it more support. So you're gonna try to find, and it's hard to find these these days, more like a hiking boot. If you have really bad, unstable ankles, wearing a hiking boot is gonna give you more stability. If you're a woman and you don't wanna wear a hiking boot, you can just try to get a regular boot that's a little bit higher. And if you don't wanna do that, sometimes you can buy an insert that's gonna have a nice deep heel cup and that's gonna make it more stable. The more stable your shoe is, the less you're gonna have that problem with going back and forth. And also, when you're buying a shoe, you're gonna wanna buy a more stable one, like the New Balance, that has more, it has more width to it, that's gonna give you more real estate underneath the shoe, versus a narrow running shoe. The narrow running shoe is gonna be more unstable. Yeah, the question is, is it common to have problems like plantar fasciitis on one foot, not the other? Yes, all the time. Thankfully, Thankfully, because if people had two feet with plantar fasciitis, they, they wouldn't have a good foot to walk on. So most problems are what we call unilateral. They're one-sided problems. Very, yes, have a bunion on one foot, not on the other foot. Very, very common. Mm -hmm. It's weird because you're walking pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah. You, you would think that both of them have it. Some people, we, we sometimes equate that because one foot's more dominant. Just like your hand, you're right-handed, sometimes one foot's more dominant. Sometimes one shoe or one foot may be a little bit bigger or smaller, and so the shoes affect it, one foot more than the other. There's a lot of reasons. People ask me why, I really don't know why, but well, we can help treat those problems, but it's very common to have it on one side and not the other. Okay, so this here is a Reebok shoe, okay? The benefits of this shoe, you can just put it on the table there. The benefits of this shoe, okay, it's very wide on the bottom. This is considered a walking shoe. It has nice tread to it. It has laces to it, and it's a very good shoe. One thing you want to look at is you want to bend the shoe. So let me show you when I bend it. So it bends right where it's supposed to at the big toe joint. So this is a very good, nice, stable shoe, and this is very similar to the New Balance 928 shoe. So this is a very good shoe. This shoe right here is a Nike, okay? The, the challenge with these shoes is they look fashionable, but as you noticed, I didn't mention that name of a shoe. Because this brand, they usually don't stamp with the technology, okay? They, they're more for fashion. So for a shoe like this, you see, where, you see where it bends? It's bending right in the middle. You want shoes that, that bend right here. You don't want shoes that bend in the middle. Another thing, see how it twists? You don't want a shoe that twists like that. Okay, so that's the challenge with a shoe like this. It's not really, it's bending in the, in the wrong place. Okay, another shoe. Is there one more? Okay, let's look at this one. This is a diabetic shoe. Yeah, so this is called Stride Light. It's a diabetic shoe. And let's look here at the shoe, okay? It's a nice shoe, it's a little bit deeper. You see where it bends? It doesn't bend in the center. It bends in the front, and when I twist it, it it's not able to twist because it's nice and stable. So the two things you want to do is you want to bend it, and you want to twist it. This is that insert that I was talking about. These inserts, they have the little toe prints because they form to the foot, okay? And you change these every four months. A lot of times what we recommend is putting the date on the bottom of it so you know when to change it. Now a good tip, if you have a hard time getting shoes on and your shoes have laces, they do make stretchable laces. That's the best thing ever as you get older. You can buy a stretchable lace. Thank you. Okay, let's look at this shoe. Uh, I can't really see the name of it. So let's look at it. It's a, it's a nice black shoe. The nice benefit to this shoe, do you see how it has this stretchy material that I was talking about? So if you have a bunion, this is gonna give because of that stretch, okay? But watch when I, watch when I bend it. Now, do you think that's very supportive? No. No. So that's the only problem. In a lot of these shoes they're making these days, you want to do the twist test and the bend test. And if it does that, it, it's probably a fine shoe, but it's not given much support. So uh, the last question is, what happens if I have big feet and I have to buy men's shoes? Just buy men's shoes, no one really notices anywhere. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.